and welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host Dan, aka Smash O Mash, and we're starting things out looking at the sun here in 304 angstroms. It's a 48 hour SDO video. Looks like some significant activity is rising up here in the northeast. Another sunspot has formed in the southwest. And more. So don't go nowhere. Or do go nowhere. And don't go anywhere. We're also going to have a look here at the 48 hour SDO movie of the 193 Angstrom's wavelength to see a lot of coronal holes. North Pole, South Pole, and lots of areas in between, as well as a significantly large one there in the south associated with the South Solar Pole. And again, more evidence of some activity rising up there in the northeast, as we forecasted two days ago by looking at the stereo, the stereo A view. By the way, we are streaming live to Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash smash mash if you want to see the videos as they are made. We do upload them also to BitChute and YouTube, and thanks to everybody who watches all the videos in all the locations. So this sunspot here has fizzled, and we no longer see Umbre, the one we talked about yesterday, but this one has formed another Cycle 25 sunspot. There are the fields, and here is the fade to 304 angstroms. Some filaments down there in the southwest as well. KP index currently at 2, having reached all the way up to 3 there for a moment. And we see an elevated solar wind density, 10.7 centimeter radio flux, now at 67. I'm sorry, 68. 68 is the current 10.7 centimeter radio flux. I had it zoomed on sunspot number there. And there's the there's the close zoom in, and this, this new setup on the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard is great. Next, looking at the Lasco C3 to show you Comet Neowise. Moving up to uh, head across the ecliptic plane here momentarily. And it should be out of C3's view by tomorrow. We may still cover it. Next, we made a custom Helio Viewer movie here. This is a kind of a slow-mo, one-day image. And there you can see the formation of that sunspot. We'll see if it's around long enough to get named, as the one we looked at yesterday was not named, 2766. Don't be surprised if that one does get named. It looks a little more defined. Next, let's look at the real-time solar wind. Just saw some pretty wild shifts here in the BTBZ. The BT went all the way up to nine, the BZ went down to negative six. So, South Pole magnetism at its finest. Current phi angle is around 300 degrees. Solar wind density has ramped down from about 30 protons per cubic centimeter at its peak to about 14 protons per cubic centimeter now. Solar wind speed at background levels, 315 kilometers a second. We don't see any significant proton flux or, or X-ray flux at the current time. Probability has gone up infinitesimally with that small sunspot in the southwest. Goes magnetometer is looking pretty spiky here. And for you new viewers out there, the N's and M's are noon and midnight local time for the GOES-16 satellite. Next, we'll look at the uh, magnetic environment here around the sun with the line of sight field plot courtesy of the GONG-2 data, part of the National Sunspot Observatory. And we do see some striations up here in the B field associated with that active region rising. Could be a sunspot. Perhaps we'll make another video later to analyze that. And here's the top view ecliptic plane field plot. And I would say we've got less than 24 hours in the South Pole current sheet shown here in red until we snap into the... Nope, scratch that. We're going to be more than a day. We're going to be more than a day. We're going to remain in the South Pole current sheet because of the location of that activity. You can kind of see some evidence of it here. 
and without getting too in depth into it because it's a daily space weather video and we've got other things to do, lots of things to do. Let's look at the geospace magnetosphere movies. And we see an increased pressure from where it was yesterday when it was very weak. Now we see more nominal levels here. So despite the very slow wind speed, the high density is creating some pressure as there are lots of protons. They're just not moving particularly fast. Solar wind is made of like 90% hydrogen nuclei, folks. Anyway, there's four hours of data on that. Here's four hours of data of ground magnetic perturbations. And we see significant ones both over the Canadian North Pole and lots of stuff over the South Pole region as well. If you're wondering where the South Pole is located these days, it's off of the coast of Antarctica, someplace around here. We've got a Canadian North Pole up here, a Siberian North Pole up here, and a net North Pole somewhere over here east of Greenland. Anyway, there's four hours of data on ground magnetic perturbations courtesy University of Michigan. Electron flux is still incredibly low, not as low as it was in the past week or so. We've gotten to the higher levels that we've seen here for a while, and we see some anomalies in the, uh, the air column. We'll show you that next. And uh, we're not, we're expecting to see this at very low levels again now because of this increased solar wind density. Next, looking at the entire air column here for electrons, it's the total electron content forecast. This includes the thermosphere, ionosphere, plasmasphere. So the entire air column between the GPS satellites and you, and we're showing continued anomalies here over the South Pacific, Central America, and the Caribbean, where there are an excess of electrons at nighttime. Let that play through a second time so you can see it. Also the South Central Atlantic. Here's just the ionosphere. This is six hours of data. It's from Bureau of Meteorology of Australian government. And the ionosphere is remaining a little bit wobbly like it's been for the past couple of days here. Not very smooth at all. Here's the latest frame from 930 UT. And that's actually looking fairly normal there. Here's what's going on above my head in terms of stars, planets, etc. If you get up before dawn, you should be able to see Jupiter and Saturn and Mars and Venus rising well before the sun, getting pretty high in the sky there. If you've got a low horizon, maybe check that out. And we're streaming right at sunrise here in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Here's where stuff is in the solar system. And uh, every single planet is on the same side of the sun right now. The heck? Well, that was weird. Anyway, we're looking at theplanetstoday.com. Here's where things are today. <laughs> and there's where things will be on July 2nd. I guess I can't show you where they'll be in a week because reasons. Next, looking at earthquakes, we see quite a few deep quakes here, starting with this Venezuelan 4.5 magnitude quake at 128.126.2 kilometers depth. That one came in at 1033 UT yesterday. About three hours later, we see a 4.7 in Argentina. That one's at nearly 200 kilometers there. And let's take a look at this extremely shallow quake at Pinnacles, California. There's a location of that in the Diablo range. That one occurred 700 meters above sea level. And let's get back to the list. Here's another deep quake in western South America at Chile. It's a 4.6 magnitude at 118 kilometers. Here's a deep quake in New Zealand, 129 kilometer depth on that one. It's a 4.9 magnitude. And just scrolling up the list, scrolling up the list. I believe the largest in the past 24 was this 5.1. Nope, scratch that, it was a 5.4. Let's just continue up the list here. There you go, largest quake of the past 24 was this 5.4 at the Philippines. Next, volcanoes. We see a Biko still erupting, flight level 12,000 there. Semeru exploding, flight level 13,000 there. Tacono exploding, flight level 7,000 there. Popocatapetl exploding, emitting some steam. 
19,000 foot ash plume there, and Sabankaya is exploding, producing a flight level of 27,000 with its volcanic ash plume. Please do not attempt to do a back handspring over the caldera. Here's where pressure cells are located. We'll let this we'll let this advance via the GFS forecast. It's windy.com, who's got a great mobile app, by the way. If you haven't checked that out, perhaps download it on your smart device. It's completely free. And it's got more data than you probably ever need. Here's where we expect things to be at 12 noon tomorrow. And that's my time, and I again, I'm in the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Here are the jet streams of the eastern world. We see very powerful jets in the south and extreme meridional jet stream flow in the north. Here's the Western world's jets, and they are all over the place, over US. We've got the jet stream flowing southwest over here, which is totally anomalous. Big rifts in the jet stream, and a rather incoherent jet stream, to say the least. Next, we'll look at water vapor maps for Africa and Europe. Water vapor maps for the Far East and Oceania. Lightning maps. It looks like there's some lightning strike in Pennsylvania. And I think it's simmered down. Let's see what else is going on. Some pretty concentrated storms here in, in Kansas. Hey, Wichita. Hey, Kansas City. You're about to get hit. And hey, Wichita, go outside and look to your northeast. You might see sprites. Get your camera, put it on a tripod, take some time-lapse photos. Or some long exposure photos, better yet. And there's that series of storms that's going to cause us to be rained out today and probably not race. We'll tell you about that momentarily and the crazy rules that are required for us to race a bicycle. Next, looking at the uh, U.S. water vapor map. Large plume of dry air there over the Atlantic Ocean. And Saharan dust. See all this? This is all Saharan dust here, folks. And uh, surprisingly not making rainfall yet, but affecting places like Cuba. And let's take a look at what's going on over Pennsylvania. It could burn off. I'm not sure what the, what the dew points and pressure gradients are right now. We'll have to save that for a different video, as this is daily space weather, not meteorology. Wouldn't want to step on the toes of David Schlottower. Or of Adrian's weather forecast. Cheers. Shout out to David Schlottower and Adrian. Anyway, there's the current state of affairs over the mid-Atlantic states. And it uh, doesn't look particularly good for bike racing, in my opinion. And welcome to the Smash Lights segment, where we take a pause on the daily space weather and we talk about whatever we want. Seems like a good time to be on fire right now. By the way, our forum's on fire. It's smashamash.com slash forum. Up to nearly 1,300 users now. Thanks, everybody, for setting up logins. This is totally free. And if you'd like to contribute, you have to set up a login. That's totally free also. There will be a paywall coming eventually at smashamash.com, and the details of that are secret. Let's talk about China. China. It's Chinese COVID-19. It's from China. China. It's from China. By the way, China and Russia have completely revealed themselves as nearly powerless entities that people are going to fear-monger you about. China is a complete paper tiger, and Russia is a complete teddy bear. Stop being afraid of these countries. The people in those countries are just like you, and the governments of those countries are just like yours. Highly ineffective and overpaid. Lawmakers in Canada and Scotland have pointed to the U.S. as an example of failed coronavirus containment. Oh my God! What are we going to do? Canada and Scotland don't like what the U.S. has been doing. Several foreign lawmakers have described, such as Canada's Ontario Premier Doug Ford, have called the U.S. response reckless. Oh my God, it's freaking reckless. First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, 
used the U.S. surging cases as a way to remind residents for the need to practice social distancing. We're going to talk more about this momentarily. Um, so what's, what's your stance on lockdowns and mask wearing and herd immunity and, and so on? What's your stance? Let us know in the comment section. We'll talk about more uh, Yahoo News articles. The Dixie Chicks are now no longer known as the Dixie Chicks. I guess they're now known as the Chicks, I guess. And I guess that's a that's not supposed to be a sexist, uh, derogatory term. So they've dropped the nickname for the state south of the Mason-Dixon line, Dixie. And uh, what what are your thoughts on all this rebranding? Do you think it's smart, idiotic, pointless? Do you think it solves racism or does much of anything? Let us know in the comments section. Anyway. Another popular country band, Lady Antebellum, shortened its name, Changing Antebellum. So it's now it's known as Lady A. Now, I don't know how much TNA she's going to show, but thank goodness Aunt Jemima's brand is going to be rebranded because, oh my gosh, it's so racist to have somebody's face on a, on a bottle of pancake syrup. I'm going to show this just, just for a second because I don't want to get banned. And let's talk about COVID-idiots. Somebody's been walking around with an amazing mask. Oh my gosh, it's, I think it's by Gucci. Please let us know if, if, you're, if you know who Joe is wearing. No malarkey Joe says, as president, he would require face coverings in public. Oh yeah, just what we need. We need the federal government to require face coverings. Because, you know, wearing a mask is so effective, pardon the sarcasm. Apparently, they make a gigantic difference, according to the presumptive 2020 Democratic presidential nominee. <laughs> oh, man. By the way, part of the reason why personal protective equipment doesn't work when the government just decrees that everybody wears it is because training is required in order for personal protective equipment to be effective. There are techniques just for simply taking gloves off, much less wearing masks. If you're not trained, you probably don't know what you're doing. And uh, let's talk about Governor Tom Wolf reminding residents that wearing masks is still mandatory in businesses. Well, thanks, Tom. Very helpful of you. We greatly appreciate that. And we, gra we greatly appreciate your COVIDiotic physician general, Dr. Rachel Levine, also. Now, neither of these people are qualified to tell us anything about anything. But apparently now, since these two ingenious bureaucrats right here are in charge of Pennsylvania's health. They're making America suck, by the way, and it's up to you to make America not suck. So Mansa, let's talk about the require. Let's talk about the requirements for doing a bike race. Hey, thanks, Tom. Tom, have you decided to move to Bangladesh yet or Sri Lanka? I hear mask wearing is is just wonderful in those plates in those state in those countries. The worker safety order from. Health Secretary Dr. Rachel Levine requires all businesses to require both customers and employees to wear a mask. The order requires businesses to provide masks for workers to wear during their time at the business and make it a mandatory requirement to wear masks while on the work site, except when an employee is using break time to eat or drink. Employers may approve masks obtained or made by employees in accordance with Department of Health guidance. In other words, literally any piece of cloth over your face is fine. And uh, uh, yeah. that right there is Pennsylvania's leading COVID idiot. Let's talk about the requirements of what I'll have to do if I race today, which I'm planning to, but it's probably going to get rained out. So we're wearing we're wearing no numbers, which. I'm all about that. There'll be no track access. In other words, we won't be able to warm up or do anything on the track. We'll have to just warm up in the parking lot on the roads on the Bob Rodale Fitness Park. At the start of each event, an initial group of five to 10 entrants will be brought to the infield 10 to 15 minutes prior to their event, but only after the conclusion of the preceding event, if any. All entrants must clear the screening questions and temperature checks at the front entry gate, and then you've got to line up outside the main entry gate in order to 
and, and enter in order at a time as one one at a time as rider finish as each rider finishes. The process will reset with different event slash distance taking place. You got to leave immediately, and all athletes and coaches will be required to wear masks at all times while inside the venue, except when they are actively riding on the track. Athletes will be required to cross the bridge and should be wearing non-cycling footwear while entering and exiting the venue. The only equipment permitted will be your track bike, your helmet, and your shoes. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, your coach can enter, and uh, by the way, here's what's going on. It's a bunch of timed events, and... Uh, I guess I have the greatest pro probability of anybody of actually being on. And there I am. I'm heat number five in the men's standing start four-kilometer time trial. By the way, we are also on Instagram. And I can't talk today. I don't know what's up. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So we, we do, we, we always post up exclusive stuff there. Thanks everybody for tuning in on YouTube, etc. on BitChute. We are also there thanks to all, all our new subs. We've been putting up highlights every day. And uh, one more little point to make during today's Smash Lights section. Again, what were the benefits of locking down? Were you aware that states that didn't lock down ended up with better results than ones that did? Just let that sink in. Sentinel, the nonprofit news source of Kansas City po Kansas Policy Institute, confirms our research by reporting the following data: Lockdown states have an overall 13.2 on uh, unemployment rate, and open states have a 7.8 unemployment rate. But we're talking about health outcomes. Turns out that in terms of health, lockdown states have nearly four times the death rate from COVID-19. If you want to read this one. It's located on the American Institute for Economic Research site. And here ends today's Smash Lights section. Please tell your friends and tell your foes. Tell your neutrals. Tell your science noobs and tell your science pros. Do you see my powers? Do, do you see my powers? Hey, Smash Team. Thanks for tuning in to the Smash Stream. Whether you viewed it live or you viewed it Memorex, I think you probably viewed it Memorex, as we didn't see any comments. And thank you for flying on American Smashways. Please keep your head and arms inside the Smash Plane at all times. Here's a bonus feature. It's a view of the sunspot down here in the southwest which has degraded since I started making the video. There you can see some umbre. Probably not going to get named at this rate. Next, looking at the colorized magnetogram. And here we can see some activity rising here in the northeast, as I stated earlier. And there's that sunspot. Probably not going to get named. That doesn't mean it's not a sunspot. It's just that they have to be a sunspot for more than 12 hours. It's alpha class at the current moment. Let's take a look at this field up in the northeast before we move on to one final video here. And there you can see some organization rising there in the northeast. And how about one one more video here? It's the 94 Angstrom's 48-hour SDO movie. It's about that time. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Remember, stare at the sun. Attempt to understand the physics. Don't drink it if you do. Don't drive. And since it'll never be now again, seriously, don't drive. May that solar wind be at your back. Welcome to the neo-renaissance. And may that covidiacy eventually find its way out of existence.